All right, next I will quickly uh, give an introduction of the five tracks for the summer workshop. Then Mr. Ryan will take it over to take a deep dive for each and every one of them, right? This year we have five tracks for the summer art workshops. They are divided into uh, drawing, sketching, color series, and painting, digital art, animation, career exploration, and art portfolio. Right. Again, uh, going back to our website, here is the schedule, one for Fremont, one for Pleasanton, right? So depending on which one you wanna choose. Um, next section I would actually like to introduce to you is this uh, overview section for the summer workshops, right? These are the five tracks. And for each track, we have leveled them. We have provided levels, like there are all levels, intermediate, advanced, and so on and so forth. So the, uh, going back to that. The idea is, you know, if it's O level or intermediate level, uh, O levels, that means uh, anyone, you know, as long as they satisfy the age requirement and they can, you know, participate or can join those camps. Uh, if it's intermediate level, it requires a beginner, like a level class first before you can take that, all right? And if it's O level or that, then you, anyone can take it, right? Beginner level, same thing, and uh, just for the beginners and so on and so forth, right? And for each of those camps, actually many of them, we have created links to the, um, the contents of that. For example, like say, there's a drawing sketch. Let's pick an expressive figure drawing, right? They will directly jump to the sample section that the teachers like demo. This is about the type of like a subject and they will be teaching style, right? So we have all those links. Actually, for most of them, we have links. So feel free to, uh, if something you're interested in, you can just click on that and take a look at what this thing will be, what will be taught, okay? All right, so yeah, about the levels, right? So like, as I mentioned before, these workshops are meant to be a multi-year like a uh, planning tool. So you can, you know, based on your goals and objectives, you can make some selection and make a plan actually for the next few years. So what do you wanna do? which camp you wanna take first and based on the levels and the, the difficulty and also your goals, right? And uh, yeah, so that will be the uh, quick overview of the workshop. Next, I will hand it over to Mr. Ryan who will give a detailed uh, introduction for each and every one of those camps, okay? Hey Ryan, you can get started. All right, so hello everybody. So I'm gonna be going over the individual camps and kind of the jobs they um, fulfill as you move forward with your education track. I'm just sharing my screen now. So we have the schedule for the drawing and sketch track here to look at and the individual teachers will be te teaching it. Uh, myself being one of them, Sean, Sung and Erica are the other three. And as Jason was discussing, we have um, the schedules here of different levels. So the drawing and sketch track is, basically drawing and sketch is the foundation of pretty much everything we do as we go forward. So the, they're gonna have everything from different mediums. A lot of it's, it's all black and white based education with a color, occasional color added into it, which I'll talk about as I get to other classes. Um, but we have the, the general schedule here. You see the levels and the intermediate advanced all and all that kind of stuff. So this will be on the website as we go forward, but I wanna talk about individual classes and get into it there. So sketching basics is the first one. So. Sketching basics is the core foundation of everything going forward. Um, and examples that we see up here, they focus on drawing from life. So still life, value-based, proportion-based drawings. Uh, so this is the, the core of everything as we go forward uh, is understanding values, understanding proportions. So if, you've, if you're not feeling very advanced within your sketching skills, this is a class that's offered in the first week of the camps across the board. So it's one to take. Uh, that'll give you a good window to move into the rest of the camps as you go forward. 
Um, if you have been taking drawing and sketch on a weekly basis with us for a while, this is might be a camp if you want to review things, but at the same time, it may not be necessary and you'll be able to move into the more intermediate camps. Um, but it does cover with charcoal uh, and basic foundational drawing. So drawing and sketch track for architecture pen and ink is uh, using a lot of those foundational skills that you would see within the drawing and sketch basics or drawing and sketch one, two, and three that we see during the normal school year and using a new medium and learning how to process a lot of that information with a new medium, which is going to be advantageous to portfolio production and a lot of other venues moving forward. It'll be reference-based and uh, dealing with architectural-based drawings as well as hatching and how to shade with pen and ink. Um, so this is a really great tool to have at your disposal for sketching just in general. Uh, it's a great thing to be able to sketch in pen and ink for practice. So it's a good introduction to have into it to deal with pen and ink. Um, and of course, we're focusing on architectural based drawings. The other side of this though is the landscape sketching with pen and ink. So we're dealing with more organic environments and how to simulate those things, which are gonna be different uh, in how they're expressed and the different types of mark making that might happen with the pen and ink and introducing that, which is another side of it where the architectural drawing will be dealing with linear perspective and you see perspective in these drawings, but there's also organic elements that they're matched up with and how to merge them together. Also a sketching technique to for just sketching in person in your sketchbooks with pen and ink in general. Um, so I wanna introduce all of these. We've got a lot of these to look at, so we're gonna keep moving. So once again, pen and ink, but portrait. Um, portraits, of course, are one of my favorite topics, but this is uh, taking the same kind of pen and ink based structural things, everything from really soft, subtle, thin pens and ink, pen and ink to contour based drawing to hatching and shading. So different ways of approaching the same topic and different shading and stylistic styles for the same topic, but it uses the topic of portraiture and the foundational structures of portrait drawing and proportions and then a new medium to basically explore this topic that many of you have covered and some have not. Um, so also a very good portfolio building structure as well as pen and ink ends up going into a lot of other mediums as you go into portfolio production. So it's a highly recommended medium in general. So the other part that we're going to start getting into is the uh, bird's eye perspective. So drawing and sketch track. So perspective is linear perspective, multi-point perspectives. This one is bird's eye, which is looking down into elements as we see within the, um, the examples displayed and all three of them from color to pencil to looks like pen and ink possibly. Um, and it's how to use linear perspective, which is vanishing points and horizon lines and to measure space out to make believable environments. Um, and this one is an extreme angle of the perspective, which is challenging and can push students to just kind of how they think about using perspective in general. Um, there's multiple perspective classes here that are all going to present different aspects of perspective as well. So we have creative multi-point perspective drawing. So the creative perspective drawing there's and creative multipoint is a, they're gonna be theme-based, so say monster in the city and things like that. But this is really taking technical skills like perspective linear based drawing and developing creative environments using these skills. Uh, they still will use reference and production of these drawings, but they will be using the one point, two point and three point based perspectives to build detailed kind of fleshed out environments for characters to be interacting with. This is a great skill set for us to start heading towards entertainment design, illustration, and animation. Um, so it's a good place to explore. Also, the good thing with these perspective-based classes is a lot of the perspective stuff we do is some of the first classes, first assignments you see, say, in the AP curriculum and the once a week classes. And so if you do really well in here, it's a good way to also get ahead of yourself heading into AP, taking these perspective classes in general. Um, and so using them from technical rendering for landscapes to creative environments. Drawing visual illusions. Um, this is a class I think I would like to take or teach, but so uh, drawing visual illusions is basically the same thing of taking value-based cues of understanding how to shade and create depth, but creating depth instead to create the illusion of something happening on the paper instead. There's many ways to do this, such as pattern-based ones, such as these, where it's like you're dealing with perspective, number one, which is what would be used to create this. 
and then the values to make it feel like it's sinking into a hole. But the other types of visual perspectives can be such as the famous like MC Escher pieces where a hand drawing a hand like creation from creation or distorted fisheye perspective, which is what's happening here. So a lot of these drawing visual illusions will latch on to perspective-based tools as well as visual value-based tools to create illusions within the 2D space. Uh, there's also ways that things overlap. So something of this nature where it can be seen as multiple things from different angles, but then you realize the overlaps are subtly different. So the illusions is how to create interesting dynamic things that happen on the paper using sometimes very simple tools that can be very, very interesting as we go. And it's a great kind of tool to start bringing into more creative and abstract expressionism type things. Mixed media portraiture. So focusing on trying to express emotional qualities and expressions, we're going to take the tools of portraiture. So things that you're gonna have like drawing and sketch based tools, and then how to use other mediums mixed in with them. A lot of the things you're gonna see here are gonna start tying in collage, pen and ink, watercolor, and how do these mediums function together? Um, this is a very, very good skill set to be bringing into your portfolio production for both AP supplemental. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Accidentally skipped way out of whack. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> accidentally hit a button on my keyboard. I'm sorry, everybody. So um, so this is a great kind of thing for all types of portfolios from supplemental portfolios and AP art production portfolios, where a lot of uh, mixed media, like just learning how to use different mediums together can actually speed up production and bring a lot of different interesting things to production within a portfolio. Uh, this class will be seen through the lens of dealing with portraiture. So taking a technical skill and adding these abstract elements to it. Um, as well as multiple mediums. So portrait and figure drawing, as it says here, portrait and figure drawing is, is kind of the, one of the big core skills for a lot of different majors going to the arts. So animation, character design, entertainment design, game design, I mean, illustrators and fine artists have to do it. Uh, but it, it there's connections to all types of things. So people that are really interested in topics such as animation, or entertainment design. This is an integral class for you to take. Um, and in fact, should, con should repeat taking the, we have the introductory one, the expressive and the advanced and pretty much anybody interested in animation should or entertainment design should be tackling this class and should make a habit out of tackling this kind of class. It's a topic that you can't just take once like all the other topics, uh, but it's, it's definitely super important to be taking. We'll have live models, we'll have short draws and long draws and different approaches for how to tackle drawing a model in front of you. Um, there's also portraiture based things as well. So, and you're gonna see different versions of this and we have the expressive figure drawing. Now this is the intermediate advanced level of it. You would have to be taking the introductory figure drawing to take the expressive figure drawing or you know, be approved by a teacher to, to, to plan on the introductory yeah. based one. You know, like in the uh, summer, I mean, attending the, the class for the summer art. This will bring a stylistic, impressionistic, and expressive type mo movement and motion into the portraits and figures that you're drawing, uh, which you see is expressed just in the, the, the examples that we have here showing much more flowing mark making good control of values, good control of proportions, all these technical skills are still there, but we started being at adding like an artistic flair to it as well and exploring how that can be done. Um, so expressive colored sketch. So this is, handles a lot of different topics of portrait figure and street theme landscapes. It's a lot of versions of this, but what it is is the ability to capture things in a very, very kind of clean and clear way within a, using minimal color, but controlling value um, and how to bring those things and use value to bring things forward. These are really, really important skill sets for your ability to just sketch in public. It's a great thing to bring into those elements, but it's also a good thing so that you understand how to express depth within landscape and how the values of that function, which we call an atmospheric perspective, but, um, Something else. 
Yes, they do have a lot of watercolor in it. I saw a question come up really quick. So Expressive does use a lot of watercolor coupled with some pen and ink and other tools at your disposal. But the colors that you're seeing here are gonna be generated with watercolor. I've also seen when you have that kind of skill set with watercolor, it's also can be done with markers and things of that nature going forward. But the class will focus on a watercolor basis. Um, and this is a very, and they're meant to be quick, expressive, and something to capture life around you at a high rate of speed. So it's a really important skill set as you go forward and can also be really great portfolio pieces that can be made very quickly. Once again, it skipped forward on me. Oh, no, it didn't. Sorry, my computer lagged on me for a second. I got lost. Um, so we're going to be moving into the color series and painting track. So once again, we have the um, schedule up for it. There's a lot of different classes in this section using different mediums, focusing primarily on oil and watercolor, but there are also pastel mediums that are being introduced as well, of uh, soft pastels and oil pastels and the variety of teachers that are below. So oil painting, beginner, intermediate. So oil painting, beginner, intermediate is an introduction into how oil painting functions in general. Uh, they start with black and white and very limited palettes. And the, the core of this class wants to give you a good foundation of just what are the diff best practices in dealing with oil paint? How's the best way to mix it? How the best way to take care of the supplies? and eventually also does get into full color palettes and color mixing and ways of approaching this. So anybody who's never taken any kind of oil painting class, this is the first step before you go into future classes. Um, it's a still life based class and they produce anywhere between three and four pieces throughout the week that are meant to be very high rate of speed and education based. So, and as we go forward, you'll see abstract expressive oil painting. So abstract expressive, you would want to take the introduction, like the intermediate beginner class before, so you have a good foundation of how oil painting functions. But then you can come go in and start playing with very colorful and very playful elements using those. A lot of times what you'd want to do is still make sure you're in control of value, which comes from your drawing and sketch skill set. And then you have the new oil painting color mixing skill set, as well as mark making and how to mix colors. And these two things can be combined for a lot of very expressive and abstracted and decorative beautiful paintings just to kind of hang around the house. And are also really good portfolio pieces and a good way to demonstrate in portfolios an ability to think outside of the box and challenge yourself with a new way of approaching medium in general. So color series oil painting flowers is like one of the next steps after the beginner intermediate, these are difficult uh, sub subject matter, but they're still still life based subject matter. So you do need to have the ability to be able to handle all the different colors and understand how oil paint mix, mixes and functions and all that kind of stuff. But then we deal with focusing in on the topic of flowers themselves, which is a great opportunity to play with bright colors, good textures, and a lot of different elements there. It's um, still life and observational and technical and also can lead to really great like portfolio pieces for supplemental and skill set pieces leading into AP production and basically to advance oil painting skills further than the introductory class does. Um, we have the portrait. I believe this is a por portfolio level class on the oil painting. Um, so I, I know that it's a more advanced class where you do have to like go through a couple of different steps of the oil painting to get there. Um, if it is the uh, portfolio level class and it's de generating portfolio pieces for supplemental portfolios, colleges, and things like that, as well as greatly increasing your skill set for dealing with portraiture and handling oil and color and value and maintaining all of those skill sets and combining them into realistic portraiture. Color series tracks. So, yeah, these are the college portfolio development and art contests. The portfolio one is also good for that, but. Um, the cityscape and landscape is a intensive like all day class. So um, where you will be dealing with uh, in-depth uh, approach on how to deal with landscapes and cityscapes. Uh, these are excellent pieces for portfolios, college portfolio supplemental and art contests. Uh, it's taking your perspective skills, your value skills, your painting skills and hybriding it all into one package for some very, very strong developmental pieces and pieces to use going into portfolios into the future. Um, 
highly recommend this class for advanced oil painting students and anybody looking when they have that skill set looking to build portfolios in general. So soft pastel. So soft pastel is, um, I believe it's the chalk pastel is uh, what it is. So that would be soft, colorful blending type pieces that lead into um, using them for realistic cues and uh, textures and portraits and flowers. But uh, color pastel, chalk pastel is also basically just like, I like to explain it as colored charcoal. I mean, it's not exactly the same, there are differences. But a lot of people that are really advanced with black and white charcoal actually can usually step into this and learn a lot of color based things because they can function fairly similarly to each other. Yeah, um, um, let me, yeah, sorry, let me yeah, it's okay. a little bit of, of, about um, this, why we want to provide this class, uh, because Chun Fa Liao is my teacher. Yeah, I went back to Taiwan and I took some classes with him when I was in Taiwan. He is truly a master. And then he approached everything so fast and with like soft pastel, it was so amazed. And only by taking a couple of classes, I learned so much from him. So that is, I think that our students will definitely benefit a lot by learning different kind of like um, a, another different medium from yeah. him. Yeah, and um, yeah, he's, he speaks a little bit English, not so well, but he conduct a lot of online classes. So um, I think I will be, be there with him. And then also some other teachers is going to be taking his class as well. So we can also help him to translate. But okay. his, his way of doing teaching is really, really good. Yeah, okay. so put awesome. all the colors together, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Fantastic. So that's great to hear that. It sounds like a really great class to take. And it's a new medium. We haven't really had classes with soft pastel before. Uh, they've been available, but not for using in this way in any way. So this is definitely a new thing to take and would benefit people greatly. So if you do not have this skill set, this is definitely a class you're looking at. And I believe it's one of the evening classes happening over summer. So then we also get into watercolor. So before we've been talking about oil paint, oil paint is a thick, viscous paint. Um, Watercolor is kind of, it's the polar opposite of it. It's very watery. You can get a lot of, well, obviously it's watercolor, but uh, it's basically uh, a lot of really like thin translucent effects and very soft, very wispy, but very good at a whole lineup of things, just like oil paint. But watercolor is very different than oil paint. Watercolor is, it, it, it can be hard to deal with in the beginning, but it's actually a really, really accessible paint for students. It's something that they can work on at home and as well as learn in person. But the other really beneficial thing of watercolor that I like to talk about is that it's really, really good with mixed media. It plays well with other mediums, pen and ink, color pencil, chalk pastels, all work well with watercolor. So it ends up being a nice production medium for speed of production within AP, as well as other traditional portfolios going forward. So if someone has had a lot of color experience, but not a lot of watercolor experience, it's a nice kind of thing to add to your toolbox for production and overall. Um, and this is a class which will introduce the kind of the core basic intro aspects of watercolor and how to function with it. Um, it does go in the same kind of track as oil where we'll get into more complicated versions of the same medium. So landscape and architecture, but using watercolor to express these and going like spending more time on individual paintings and digging deeper into the topic of how it functions for this specific thing. And you can see the results are pretty amazing, even in the uh, examples that we have here. So introduction to Chinese painting. So I, I actually am not knowledgeable about it enough to speak about it past the fact that I know I love all of it. So it's kind of like, um, but I know that these are within our color series track. And I think they actually teach a lot of great color theory, a lot of great value based things that are there. Um, and a lot of different like brush handling and how to express all these different elements. Um, if yeah, I will be teaching the class. Yeah, um, yeah, because I've been like teaching Chinese painting for over 25 years. And uh, Chinese painting is like a very unique skill and uh, how to just like using one stroke with all different color and come out with all, all the, um, with the, the subject. So, um, I think that students they can learn. I plan to teach a lot of a, a lot of basic skill with starting with the animals and also uh, bam, uh, also bamboo with panda, uh, goldfish, and over, or even like an easy landscape. So students they will get a 
a very like um, just like very easy uh, introduction uh, for Chinese painting in a very short period of time. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, and then color series track oil pastel. So oil pastel is, um, I mean, in fact, has a lot in common with oil paint. It is similar mediums with less, uh, to make it less liquidy. There's many different techniques to use oil pastel. It's a great medium for everything from realism into abstraction and has kind of the ability to do everything in between. Um, and so, but it is a drawing medium. So it's a dry medium instead of a liquid based medium. It can be liquefied, but that's something I can teach at another time. So, uh, but it's a, also a medium that can be used with other mediums. It tends to play fairly well with a couple of other mediums on top of it. And they'll obviously be dealing with topics of landscape, floral and animal as they go into it. So really, really good te like technical pastel color medium to add to your toolbox. So we have the uh, digital art and animation section. So um, same teachers that we discussed before of Ken and Ava, but then we also have the additions of Ron and is that April and Sean. <laughs> so, um, and so we're gonna have a, so digital art influence, fluency is something that's really important just in general. Uh, as you head down the course of art production, you wanna add the ability to use digital to your toolbox in general, overall. It can show up in all versions of portfolios from AP to supplemental to art, and particularly art majors. They really need a lot of digital, but it helps everyone. Um, and all those traditional skills that we've been talking about up to this point, they all translate into digital. So the color theory stuff, the value stuff, the proportional drawing, all these things just make digital, like your digital work that much stronger as you get into it. So it's a highly recommended skill in general to add to your toolbox and for speed of production. Um, and we have multiple different things here. We have the digital art and animation track. So the schedule that we see here where we'll have 3D modeling, which 3D modeling is you know, sculpture, sculpture within 3D space and 3D objects for multiple different uses. Um, then we have all the different Photoshop based classes of the introductory uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. But you're also gonna see um, the animation based camps that you're seeing with Ken where they start getting a little bit more advanced and ha handling uh, more difficult skills. This is also where you're gonna see the graphic design based camps is in the digital camps, which is also the intermediate advanced. And we'll start talking about some of those as well. Whoa. Okay. So beginner intermediate digital drawing is uh, where you're gonna be focusing on Photoshop and you are going to be learning how to navigate the program, the basic functions of the program, how to draw and paint with the program um, and take those, as we said, technical drawing and color-based skills and apply them into the digital medium, the media itself. Photoshop is the primary um, tool we're gonna to be using here and it is the professional standard. So if there is a digital program that you should learn, it is Photoshop in the long run. It is pretty much the big universal one used by everybody as well as the tactics used in it do kind of relate to everything else. So it's definitely the best one to go with, but it's a how to basically use Photoshop for everything from landscape, atmospheric perspective. And you see also cartooning and character design. As we get into the intermediate advanced, you start seeing them handle more difficult topics. Um, they are still doing character design, but you see much more complicated versions of the characters. But we also start getting into rendering and digital painting and how to use digital art and how to dig into it using the different effects to create much more fleshed out environments. And this is where like entertainment design, animation, illustration, they need to be good at these skills but so do the AP Studio Art students, so do the supplemental students for speed of production as we go. But it's a, taking these skills and pushing them forward faster. So uh, graphic design, we are also still gonna be using digital um, and they'll be uh, covering the kind of core concepts within graphic design. Here we see logo-based design or how the logo can be wrapped around a uh, object such as the cup, the Frappuccino. Um, but it's typography and logo and how do they interrelate for clear, clean communication. 
um, how to simplify things. So the sweet delights with the lamb cow head or the coffee cup with books and books, box is a box. Um, so, but basically how can we talk about those things and how can we kind of clear, clearly demonstrate that this it's usually for marketing and advertising or uh, basically presenting to the public in general uh, businesses and things of that nature. So, but we have clear simplification coupled with typography and how to frame it for using in advertising or marketing or branding. So it's gonna use logo design. I'm sure there'll be some other things talked about, but logo is one of the big kind of core things that people learn when they're starting to get into graphic design. 3D modeling. This is the Maya type stuff. Uh, 3D modeling is actually really, really good and important skill for a variety of majors. A lot of people tend to think it's more for, I mean, there is like industrial design and environment and interior design, or say for animators who are doing 3D type modeling design like Pixar and all that kind of stuff. But in fact, there's a whole lineup of skills that people use Maya for, like entertainment designers tend to want to learn how to use Maya because it gives them the ability to build, say, wireframe 3D structures that simplify and streamline their production process into painting on top of them. Say, if they're designing a vehicle or something like that, they can create a 3D model and then paint it. Um, and a lot of our students have started to kind of go on, started doing that. And it's something professionals do in the field for speed of production. So Maya is a very important program for a broad selection of people that are going into the digital arts and production arts. Um, it's also kind of a really cool program, if you ask me. So uh, so career exploration tracks. Um, so these are uh, basically different skill sets that people use for career-based things. So cartoon character design, that's related to entertainment design and animation and comic books. So it's something that people will run into in a lot of different fields within the art is how to design a character and what are the moving steps and parts for it. Creative comic book is telling a story with said characters. And then we have different aspects of fashion design and intro to graphic design, which fits into this category that we just discussed. Um, so cartoon manga and character design. So manga is definitely a stylistic thing that goes within it, but, car but the, the root of character design, number one is based within figure drawing. So if this is something you're really interested in, you should also be interested in figure drawing and you should be at, at, like attaching that to what you want to do. Um, and it's taking a lot of those skills and using them in creative ways. And there's a lot of different steps in character design. Um, and this introduces a lot of those kind of core concepts of how to approach designing unique individual characters, the stories you want to tell. Creative comic book is a sequential story art. So how do we tell a story? Um, Creative comic book will actually be a really good skill set for anybody who's also interested in animation. You should know how to do storyboards. You should know how to deal with camera angles and how different camera angles express different things. Uh, this is a way to get into storytelling without having to make the picture move, but it still is very similar to the, the prep for animation or storyboards. Um, you will see different framework and stuff. I'm not going to get into that too much, but it's basically how to tell stories with the pictures you're drawing. So with the characters or with the perspective, if you need the environment, some perspective work tied into your creative comic book can help make them that much stronger. So fashion design is uh, going to be tackling different like uh, textiles, how to sketch different things for fashion and how to design different elements. So it's going to be dealing with color value tied in with a little bit of figure drawing and just how to put together different ways of communicating things. So like we even see it here of like the sketch to the prototype and how to communicate those different elements to move forward with fashion design. Um, so we have both two different sections of it. We have costume as well as accessories. So costume of course being clothing, you know, different accoutrements of that level and accessories being probably everything from handbags to jewelry. I would imagine it can go a lot, really broad selection on that category. Um, okay, AP art portfolio track. So the final one is uh, the AP art boot camps, which you're also going to see. So these are classes specifically designed for building portfolios, um, AP art portfolio, supplemental portfolio, or college portfolio. Uh, they're the they're they're the camp where we take, you know, or the weekly class, which is there. They're where we take all these different technical and creative skills that you're picking up from different places 
and gluing them together to create like pers like portfolios that are thematic, such as the APR portfolio. So for sustained investigations or supplemental portfolios for non-art majors and how to deal with both technical as well as creative work to put together the strongest supplemental portfolio you can. And then the college art portfolios, which are core art majors, and they have a variety of portfolios that they'll face, then they'll be different from each other. Um, and so basically this is the, the camp and class where you are guided by myself and other teachers. Uh, all the, the summer one will be me, uh, but during the once a week, there's multiple teachers that can be there as well uh, on the, how to build the best portfolio possible for what we needed to do, as well as building artwork for competitions specifically. Um, and we have portfolio development. So examples of different work through different students of different types of things that have shown up in portfolios. And this is an, I mean, this is like a cross section of stuff like these going together would make one of the greatest supplemental portfolios ever, but it would be like technical and how to dig into something technical to that level, the textures, the values, the colors, the accuracy of it and being careful with your production, but then also getting into message based. So how can I take some of these technical skills and create creative message based things? So we have this one, which is a gold key, fantastic painting. This is a college art portfolio, just communicating like, you know, different things, obviously, um, gun rights and things of that nature to the last one talking about like the human footprint with on the planet, you know, and how we go through it and affect the world as we go through the world. Um, and so they're good examples of uh, pieces that have been generated by students and how they've even been put into portfolios. This one even has been featured on the College Board website itself, so which is a pretty cool thing. Um, so. I believe that is 